All right, today, guys, I want to teach you how to quickly test the purge valve on a 2011 Ford Fusion. Uh, let me get you a shot of the trouble codes and then I'll explain everything I'm doing here. The trouble code on this, as you can see, is a P0455, which is a leak code. Uh, what I did off camera is I ran the functional test, the EVAP system test, and it failed that. It said that it failed to pull a vacuum or something like that on the system. And so my next check, guys, is to check this purge valve, which sits right here. And um, what I did is I pulled this line off and I bi-directionally controlled the valve and we have no flow from this. So that's the test I want to show you guys. Our uh, suspicions are that the valve is actually mechanically stuck shut and we should be able to free it up here on camera too. So uh, let me show you the test. I'll start the vehicle. Okay, so this is a normally closed purge valve. And uh, actually right now it just started working. Cool. So right now, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, that thing was, was actually chirping there a little bit, uh, meaning it was functioning. You can see on the, on the duty cycle command right now, the computer's actually trying to uh, open that valve, and right now it's not. There's no vacuum on top of that, okay? So that's where I left off before I turned the camera on. That's what I thought I was going to see again, but the valve actually started functioning right there. Um, so if I would smack on that right now with an 83% duty cycle, it would start working. The test I wanted to show was the bi-directional test, but I really don't need to do that now because the command is there. So I'm going to smack on it. Hopefully this will pick up. Listen. So that's the test. It just stopped again. Saw that stop when I wiggled that connection. That can be misleading too. I know as a rookie and, and doing this in the past, I would look at that and say, oh, that's a connection problem. But what I've learned over the years is what that actually is, is a male-female contact issue. So picture the two male pins is this hand, the females go over top, and when you move that connector, you're actually flexing those male terminals that go down inside the solenoid, and uh, that's exactly what it is. It's still the solenoid itself, it's not the wiring. Yeah, real simple bi-directional test or a real simple understanding of uh, an output solenoid um, and knowing how to read, really, computer duty cycle is the key. Some even generic scan tools will give you EVAP system duty cycle on the purge valve. So you don't necessarily need the big fancy one I'm using here um, to read purge duty cycle. Make sure the command is there and then um, you do your checks, pull this vacuum hose or this hose off this goes actually back to the tank so it's not a vacuum hose um, make sure you have no vacuum when your duty cycle command is at zero like it's showing right now at like frame 130 what you see the peak of that was about 80 percent so whenever you see the command there when you really the timing of that is when you first start the car you'll, you'll have a vacuum from your purge so that'd be the time to check it and then just smack on it like I did and try to make it work. I'll show you one more time. See the purge duty cycle counting up. And this is not me commanding it, this is just the computer running its normal startup routine on the purge valve. See the command is there, there is no vacuum here. Uh, you could also, at this point, back probe it and get a reading off it. I want to do that quickly. Go home, scope, back scope, volts DC. I just want one channel. We should have an on off pulsing going on. If I'm on the correct wire, I am not. So let's move this over to the white wire. There is your signal, turn your scales. We're going to get more voltage there. This is a pretty big spike. Oh, uh, Zener dump there at the end. 
towards the end of that spike. That's what you want to see. And what you'll see is the lower portion down here where my mouse is blinking. Um, that's the on time of this solenoid. And uh, that area will grow and shrink as the duty cycle changes. But uh, watch it again. About all we got out of it that time, but there you go. Uh, let's see, if you didn't have a scope, you can put a test light on this wire. Will that flicker? Let's, let's grab my test light real quick. Steady voltage now, that means this circuit is off. Let's go and see why I went to get my light. Yeah, see the duty cycle at frame 210 up here. My duty cycle went back to zero now. Just turned back on again over here in this corner. Oh, cool, we'll be able to watch that signal change now. Watch the signal grow. So watch the bottom portion. And you're seeing that duty cycle increase. That number that's changing right there, guys, that's that's this right here on the scan tool. That's this guy right, right here. So you see this duty cycle number changing. So right now we're at 23. So look at the number up top up here, guys. 24, 25. You see that duty cycle is increasing. Go to the scope, we'll be able to see it. Watch this bottom section down here. Watch it grow. It'll get wider and wider. That's my on time. While you guys are watching that, I'm going to connect this test light to ground. And we're adding a little bit of current to this circuit, but this is only a you know 200 milliamp test light. I'm not going to hurt it. Yeah, you see the spike is lower because my test light's kind of absorbing that a little bit. You see the light flickering on and off. That's what you want to see. And when the computer stops commanding that purge uh, to be on, this light will actually just be lit solid. So that's one way you could do it. There's other ways that you could test this valve too, but you have to be careful when you're unplugging these and then trying to get the computer to say, turn that driver on using your test light. The computer's gonna recognize a fault and then it won't do the test. So you have to be careful with stuff like that. Watch the command. So that, that signal would disappear when I unplug it because it's ground side control. So the power goes in on the green wire, wraps through a coil of wire, comes back out on this side and it's grounded by the computer. See how long that duty cycle is now? But if I unplug this electrically, that signal is going to go away. And this would be zero volts on this white wire, 12 on the green wire. Stuff I cover with my class. Chapter 3 material for you guys following along. But, uh, scanner. So, the second I unplug that, that duty side is going to drop. That's my guess. Unless I leave my test light there now, I'd have to change my polarity. Let me just try this. Okay, cool. The computer did not turn that purge off. That means that this is still being ground side switched, but my test light's on ground. So now I want to switch my test light to power. And there's your driver test that you could do. Like if your solenoid was bad and you couldn't see the spikes on your scope, you can actually do a test like this. And that's a good driver. You just obviously have to make sure the computer is activating the circuit when you're testing it. Fortunately, we have that purge valve on the scan tool, that reading. All right, so the last test, if you were just using a test light, I guess since I'm here and I'll show it to you, is, is checking the power feed side. And uh, that'll be this green wire. I'm just back probing it. I want to switch my test light's battery negative. And uh, my test light should light on that. There's your feed. And then, again, the ground plugged in. Let's go back to that. As long as the duty cycle is still there, and it is, you can do your ground side pulsing like that. This would be test light connected to ground, so whenever the computer grounds the solenoid, it also is grounding my test light at the same time. I have the new part. I'm going to throw it in for you guys. We'll do a final check on this purge solenoid.
right, so I'm going to leave this off. We have this electrically plugged in. I'm going to start the car. When it's cold during the warm up is when the purge turns on. I'm not going to show the scan tool again, but remember how it ramped up the duty cycle for this valve. So we'll just give it a second. You can even check these without the scan tool now that we know the process. There we go. Hear it? That's it, man. That's what you want to have. That should pass our EVAT leak test now. Just stalled the car out. And the reason it stalled the car out is we just purged a whole bunch of gas from the charcoal canister, and that valve was fully open. And with this old valve sticking, we were not purging that canister, so it's saturated with fuel, and that's why it just stalled the car out. Thing may actually run just a little bit rough when it first turns this valve on until we purge those uh, vapors out of this canister. It shouldn't, it should be able to handle it, but uh, it is possible that with a saturated canister, when this first turns on until it drains it out, um, that we may have a little roughness. Let's give it a second to see. It'd be nice to look at the scan tool right now and look at fuel trim, we'd be able to tell and that'll be for another time. But that's it. Sticking purge solenoid for the EVAP system.